Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you the advantages and disadvantages of the methods of waste disposal and also providing some examples of solid waste management. Let's start with the methods of waste disposal. The methods of waste disposal are landfill, incineration, waste compaction, biogas generation, composting, and vermicomposting. First is landfills. Landfills and another open dumps, nor just some hole in the ground. A basic landfill only involves the covering of solid waste with soil. This is important to reduce the amount of landfill gases methane and carbon dioxide mixing up with the air which can be harmful to the earth and living beings. Let's have a look at various advantages and disadvantages of landfills. The first advantages of landfills, landfills are an excellent energy source. When trust accumulates and begins to break down, carbon dioxide and methane are produced. These gases can be taken out filtered out, and used for energy production. The second advantage is modern landfills are eco-friendly. Older landfills were just open air dump for nearly everything, but it is not the case anymore. Thanks to the efforts of environmental experts and conservationists who brought in street clothes, regulations, and standards for landfill sites, technology is well utilized in the landfill's design. Good soil lining and leach management system ensures no seepage and damage. Third is keep cities, towns, and districts clean. Any city that doesn't have a landfill or when people know there is no efficient waste management system in place, they would simply dump waste in the vacant spot. This unhealthy for humans and the environment. With properly maintained landfill, facilities, local trash will be dealt with locally instead of shifting them to other countries. And now, let's proceed on the disadvantages of landfills. Burying waste in the ground is advantageous in many ways. But what are the disadvantages associated with landfills? Let's check! The first disadvantages are landfills are partially responsible for climate change. One zone for biodegradable waste can produce about 40 to 500 cubic meters of landfill gas. Landfill gas contains methane and carbon dioxide as the major constituent and traces of other gases. Methane is a greenhouse gas that is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide, thus increases the implications of global warming and climate change. Second is methane lights up easily. Methane is a highly inflammable gas in an enclosed space with a poor ventilation. It lights up quite easily in, and the entire landfill site can be fired in seconds. Third is contaminate soil and water. Although it's not very common for protective membranes of landfills to rupture, it can be devastating when they do. Hazardous chemicals, gases, and toxins seep from landfills get mixed with soil and groundwater water pollution. Second is incineration. What is waste incineration? Incineration is a method of waste treatment involving the burning of organic materials found in waste. Incineration and other Hatcher waste management processes are called thermal treatment. However, incinerators also have their downside. Let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of incineration. Advantages of waste incineration. First is decreases quantity of waste. Incinerators can decrease the quantity of waste by 95% and reduce the solid quantity of the original waste by 80 to 85% that depending on the components of that wear in solid waste. Therefore, incineration reduces the dependency of landfills. Second is efficient waste management. Incineration plays a vital role in making waste management easier, more efficient. Incineration can burn up to 90% of the total waste generated and sometimes even more. However, landfills only allow organic decomposition without making much difference and non-organic waste keeps accumulating. Third is production of heat and power. Incineration plants generate energy from waste that can be used to generate electricity or heat. During the 1950s, energy costs increased considerably. So a lot of countries incorporated the heat and energy produced from waste incinerators for the generations of power by using steam, tur steam turbines. 
it can be used to power the needs of people living nearby. Let's go with the disadvantages of waste incineration. First is, it is expensive. The installation of an incineration plant is an expensive process, particularly the cost of the construct the infrastructure to the cost of operating the incineration plants are very high. Second is pollutes the environment. Incinerators produce smoke during the burning process. The smoke produced includes acid gases, carcinogen dioxin, particulates, heavy metals, and nitrogen oxide. These gases are poisonous to the environment. Research has shown that dioxin produced in the plant is a cancer-forming chemical. Third is damaging public health. According to CAP 2013, research the communities where incinerator plants are built, its long-term effects come into the form of health hazards such as cancer, birth defects, reproductive dysfunction, neurological problems, and other health effects that are known to occur at very low exposure to many of the metals and pollutants released by incineration facilities. Third is waste contraction. Waste compaction is the process of compacting waste, reducing it in size. Garbage compactors and waste collection vehicles compress waste so that more of it can be stored in the same space. Waste is compacted again more thoroughly for valuable airface and to extend the landfill's lifespan. Here are some of the advantages and disadvantages of waste compaction. The advantages is if the last non-confected trash occupies up to 20 times more dumpster space than compacted waste, waste haulage costs are reduced by fewer or smaller dumpsters, and dumpsters pickup frequency can be reduced by 50%. And the disadvantages of waste compaction is that important items like evidence in a crime may be difficult to may be difficult to recover from the garbage may be difficult to recover from the garbage due to reduced oxygenation biodegradation of organic waste is also slow Fourth is biogas generation. What is biogas generation? Biogas is a renewable fuel produced by the breakdown of organic matter such as food scraps and animal waste. It can be used in a variety of ways including as vehicle fuel and for heating and electricity generation. And now, let's know the advantages and disadvantages of biogas generation. The first is the advantages of biogas generation. First is biogas generation is eco-friendly. Biogas is a renewable as well as a clean source of energy. Gas generated through biodigestion is biogas is a renewable as well as a clean source of energy. Gas generated through biodigestion is non-polluting. It actually reduces greenhouse emissions, reduces the greenhouse effect. Another advantages of biogas generation, it reduces soil and water pollution. Overflowing landfills don't only spread full smells, they also allow toxic liquids to drain into underground water sources. Subsequently, another advantage of biogas is that biogas generation may improve water quality. Moreover, an aerobic digestion deactivates pathogens and parasites. This is also quite effective in reducing the incidence of waterborne disease. Similarly, waste collection and management significantly improve in areas with biogas plants. This, in turn, leads to improvements in the environment, sanitation, and hygiene. And the disadvantages of biogas generation is first, few technological advancement. An unfortunate disadvantage of biogas today is that the systems used in the production of biogas are not efficient. There are no new technologies yet to simplify the process and make it accessible and low cost. This means large-scale production to supply for a large population is still not possible. Although the biogas plants operating today are able to meet some energy needs, many governments are not willing to invest into the sector. Second is contains impurities. After refinement and compression, biogas still contains impurities. 
if the generated biofuel was used to power automobiles, it could corroid the metal parts of the engine. This corrosion would lead to increased maintenance costs. The gaseous mix is much more suitable for kitchen stoves, water boilers, and lamps. The fifth one is composting. Composting is an aerobic method, meaning it requires air of decomposing organic solid waste. It can therefore be used to recycle organic material. The process involves decomposing organic material into a humus-like material known as compost, which is a good fertilizer for plants. The main advantages of composting are the following. Compost has an abundance of nutrients and it is suitable for a wide variety of end uses such as landscaping, topsoil blending, and growth media. Second is compost has less nitrogen than bisolids from other stabilization processes due to the loss of ammonia during composting. However, nitrogen in compost is released more slowly and is available to plants over a long period of time which is more consistent with plant and take needs. Third is well-composted sludge can meet the requirements for Class A by solids and can be sold to distributors and the public. And lastly, fourth is compost increases the water content and retention of sandy soil. And the disadvantage just of composting are the following. First is withdraw an aerated static file. Composting requires relatively large areas and odor control is a common problem. Second, is ambient temperatures and weather conditions influence when draw and aerated static file composting. And lastly, invisible reactors have limited flexibility to handle changing conditions and are maintenance intensive. And the last methods of waste disposal is vermic composting, otherwise known as worm composting, is among the quickest organic ways to obtain lovely garden composed from organic waste materials. It's also easy to do and it is scalable. Hence, it is ideal for suit regardless the size of your garden. Advantages of vermicomposting First is it pass. Depending on the environment, when you compose with worms, your compost should be ready and waiting within 2-3 to three month period. Second is more and more worms. Once the composting cycle has completed, you will have a lot more worms to play with. Worms, again, given the growth environment, will double in population within around 90 days. And third advantages of vermicomposting is outside or inside. Yes, you can vermicompost either outside or inside. In fact, if you really are an extra can vermicomposter, you can place your composting beans directly underneath your kitchen sink. And the disadvantages of vermicomposting is first, fruit flies. Yes, while they are completely harmless, fruit flies can be annoying. And there is no doubt at all that organic compost, whether outside the home or inside, can and will attract fruit flies. Second is pathogens. Because of that reduced buildup of heat, vermicomposting encourages pathogens more than when using a normal composting method. Third is cuts. While the cost involved with vermicomposting is relatively low, there is an initial price tag involved. You need to invest in beans, perhaps you do, you may have some already. And if you can get enough worms from your garden, you will have to invest in those too. What is solid waste management? Solid waste management is defined as the discipline associated with control of generation, storage, collection, transport of transfer, processing and disposal of solid waste materials in a way that best addresses the range of public health, conservation, economic, aesthetic, engineering, and other environmental con considerations. The sources of solid waste are the following. Solid domestic garbage, waste materials from various industries, solid agricultural railways, plastics, glass, metals or e-waste, etc., medical waste, and construction waste or sewage sludge. And now, let's discuss the sources of solid waste. First is solid domestic garbage. Domestic waste is garbage and waste materials discarded from household. The major components are food waste, paper, plastics, rugs, metal, and glass. Although demolition and construction debris is often included in collected waste, as are small quantities of hazardous waste, such as electric light bulbs, batteries, automotive parts, and discarded medicines and chemicals. Waste materials from various industries. 
Industrial waste generally can be categorized into two types, non-hazardous and hazardous. Non-hazardous industrial waste is the waste from industrial activity which does not pose a threat to public health or environment. For example, cartoon, plastics, metals, glass, rock, and organic waste. The solid agricultural waste are food and meat processing solid waste. This class of agricultural solid waste are produced from the processing of crop or animal products for human consumption, such as a bayator or slaughterhouse. Examples of food and meat processing agricultural solid waste include hooks, bones, feathers, banana peels, and etc. Glass, metals, e-waste, and etc. are one of the sources of solid waste that we can see in our surroundings. Bio, medical, or medical waste. This refers to hospitals and biomedical equipment and chemical manufacturing firms in hospitals, there are different types of solid waste produced. Some of these solid waste include syringe, bandages, used gloves, drugs, paper, plastic, food waste, and chemicals. All these require proper disposal or else they, they will cause a huge problem for the environment and the people in these facilities. Constructions and demolition sites also contribute to the solid waste problems. Construction sites include new construction sites for building and roads, road repair sites, building renovation sites, and building demolition sites. Some of the solid waste produced in construction sites in these places include steel materials, concrete, wood, plastics, rubber, copper wires, dirt, and glass. The effects of poor solid waste management Poorly managed waste is contaminating the world's oceans, clogging drains, and causing flooding, transmitting diseases, increasing respiratory problems from burning, harming animals that consume waste unknowingly, and affecting economic development such as through tourism. According to the World Bank Director for Urban and Territorial Development, Disaster Risk Management and Resilience. Effects of Poor Solid Waste Management First is letter surroundings. Due to improper waste disposal systems, particularly by municipal waste management teams, waste have up and become a menace. While people clean their homes and places of work, they litter their surroundings, which affect the environment and the community. Second is impact on human health. Improper waste disposal can affect the health of the population living nearby the polluted area or landfills. The health of waste disposal workers and other employees involved with these landfill facilities are also at a greater risk. Exposure to waste that handled improperly can cause skin irritations, respiratory problems, blood infections, growth problems, and even reproductive issues. Third is disease-causing pests. This type of dump materials forces biodegradable materials to root and decompose under improper, unhygienic, and uncontrolled conditions. After a few days of decomposition, a full smell is produced, and it becomes a breeding ground for different types of disease, causing insects as well as infectious organisms. Out of that, it also spoils the aesthetic value of the area. Fourth is environmental problems. Solid waste from industries are a source of toxic metals, hazardous waste, and chemicals. When released to the environment, the solid waste can cause biological and psychochemical problems to the environment that may affect or alter the productivity of the soils in that particular area. Fifth is soil and groundwater pollution. Toxic materials and chemicals may seep into the soil and pollute the groundwater. During the process of collecting solid waste, hazardous waste usually mixed with ordinary garbage and flammable waste making the disposal process even harder and risky. And six is emission of toxic gases. When hazardous waste like pesticides, batteries, containing lead, mercury or zinc, cleaning solvents, radioactive materials, e-waste and plastics mixed up with paper and other non-toxic scraps are born, they produce dioxin, furans, polychlorinated biophenyls, and other gases. These toxic gases have the potential of causing various diseases, including cancer. Seven is impact on land and aquatic animals. Our carelessness with our waste and garbage also affects animals, and they suffer the effects of pollution caused by improperly disposed of waste and rubbish. Consuming styrofoam and cigarette butts have been known to cause deaths in marine animals. Animals are also at risk of poisoning while consuming grasses near contaminated areas 
or landfills as the toxins seep into the soil. To summarize, proper solid waste management is an integral part of environmental conservation that should be observed by both individuals and companies globally. That's all for today's discussion. Thank you for watching and God bless you all. Bye-bye!